Many leading authorities say that the cause of the most common kind of dandruff is a germ called Pettiros Poromo Valley. To get real relief, this germ must be destroyed. Many ordinary dandruff-combating methods don't destroy it. But double danderine actually kills this germ on contact. Get double danderine. This is a true love story told for the people who lived it on the day of its happy ending. From Hollywood, we present... Bride and Groom. With your Master of Ceremonies, John Nelson. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, and good afternoon. When our pretty brunette bride, an airline stewardess from Colorado was offered assistance in mailing a package by two bemetalled army lieutenants. Little did she realize she was starting on the road to the altar. But our bride and groom wedding party here in the beautiful Chapman Park Hotel will be told more about this and why the groom's experience of talking people into things, gained as a recruiting officer, helped him get out of a rough spot during the romance. We'll learn more about this true love story from the young couple themselves just before they go out through the sun-filled garden down the tree-lined path the little stone chapel to pronounce their marriage vows in privacy. First, it's Jack McElroy. You know, folks, there are two things everyone who suffers from headaches should do. If you have frequent headaches, by all means, see your doctor. He will make an examination to find the cause of your headaches and probably correct it. If, on the other hand, you have only an occasional headache, take genuine Bayer aspirin. Two tablets with a full glass of water the moment you feel one starting you'll get amazingly quick relief. Because Bayer aspirin starts to disintegrate within two seconds. To prove this, just drop a Bayer aspirin tablet in a glass of water and watch what happens. Before it reaches the bottom of the glass, it will start to disintegrate. This same two-second disintegrating action takes place in your stomach. As a result, Bayer aspirin is ready to go to work almost instantly you take it. So for pain relief that's so fast you'll be amazed, use Bayer aspirin. And when you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer Aspirin, never by the name Aspirin alone. 24 tablets for 25 cents, virtually one cent a tablet. Here comes the bride, with her the groom. They're not married yet, but they will be soon. I'd like to introduce our bride and groom. Our bride is Miss Betty Jean Marchant. Her groom is Mr. Charles Anderman. And I see that you're both smiling and very happy. Oh, very happy sure. indeed. <laughs> How long have sure. you been looking forward to this day, Charles? Oh, about two years now. That long? Quite a while. Oh, right? gee. Well, then you won't be nervous because you're all prepared for it and all so. Who <laughs> <laughs> says so? What? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it would be, but I am. Are you? Well, you're among friends, and we're all very interested in, in getting right down to cases and getting acquainted. Betty Jean, is that what your friends call you? I know. My friends all call me Boots. Boots? Uh-huh. <laughs> you call her Boots, Charles? Cuddles. <laughs> That's much better. That's very cute. Well, what do you want me to call you? Well, I'd prefer you calling me Boots because everyone has now All for right, 22 Boots. years. Good. <laughs> yes, that'll be it. Well, tell us about you, if you will, please. Well, I was born in Nebraska, in Chattery, Nebraska. I'm 22 years of age, and I attended college in Nebraska for one year, and then I went to uh, Denver University. And when I finished there, that was last spring, I... Um, then I uh, went with United Airlines as a stewardess, and I've been flying since last fall with United. Grand. Uh, how many in your family? Uh, my mother, father, and one sister. Are they here today? My, mo my mother is here, but unfortunately, my father couldn't be here. But I would certainly like to say that I'm thinking of him. <laughs> I know, and, and I have a hunch that back in Nebraska, where he is, he's thinking of you, too. And oh, I know he is. <laughs> wishing you both so very well. Yeah. Well, I'm glad Mother could make it. You're a very lovely bride. You have blue eyes and soft... What do you call it, light brown hair? Uh, say? brown, I'd say, uh-huh. Light brown. What? Amber. Amber. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say, Charles, this is the thing. And what do your friends call you? Uh, 
Charles, Charlie, Chuck. Mm -hmm. What do you prefer? Chuck. Chuck? She calls me Chuck. (laughs) Well, you call her Cuddles, and I couldn't get away with that. (laughs) Supposing I stick to plain Charlie for the moment. Tell me about you. Well, uh, I was born in Union, Louisiana, down south, and uh, I'm 26 now. And uh, I have uh, three brothers and one sister, and my mother, who's back in... uh, Union now, and she's listening to the program also. And I think she'll like it. I hope she does, anyway. <laughs> well, does she know your bride? Uh, she hasn't met her yet, but, but Charles, I'm sure I she'll like it. Oh, I know she will, I assure you. But there's one nice thing you could do for your mother, I'll bet. What's and that? that is that to sort of describe your bride as she stands there now. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> well, that's very reasonable. She... Wouldn't you like to hear what you're about? Sure, go ahead, Charles. She has uh, beautiful light blue eyes, just uh, the color. Well, you've seen the latest Buick convertible, nice light <laughs> She talked me. In, she talked me into getting one of those light blue. She was. <laughs> she talked me into getting one of those light blue. Oh no! I see. <laughs> and her hair uh-huh. are amber, and she has a very nice figure. Uh, the <laughs> conventional thirty-four, twenty-four, thirty-four. Conventional figure. twenty-four, thirty-four. Uh, thirty-four. Twenty-four, thirty-four, thirty-four. No, thirty-four, twenty-four, twenty-five. <laughs> His mother's really getting a picture. <laughs> she, she's about you know, five uh, feet, three inches tall. And uh, she's very lovely. Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I think that's a good job. Charles, you said you had three brothers. And one sister. And one sister. Yeah. And your mother's listening in. Yeah. I, you, you are a lieutenant, first lieutenant in that's the United right. States Army Air Force. That's right. Uh, I've been in the Army about... Uh, Five and a half years now. You went in right after school when war broke out? Well, I was uh, attending university, and I finished in 41 in uh, horticulture. And I uh, had taken the physicals for both the Naval and Army Air Corps, and the Navy called me first, so I went to the Naval Air Corps. Then I decided to like the Army best, so I resigned and went to the... I mean, resigned from the Navy and went back to the Army. Mm-hmm. And I've been in ever since. Well, you've done quite a bit of flying. You have five battle stars, an air medal with one oak leaf cluster, and an Army citation there. Well, where, 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 where did you serve? Well, I was uh, down in Italy uh, for about uh, three months, and then uh, flying what type plane? Uh, B seventeens. I see. And uh, one day we went off on a big mission to Germany, Regensburg, Germany, and uh, it seems as if that uh, they didn't want us to get all the way over there, so they shot us down over Klagenfurt in the mm-hmm. Alps, yes. Austria, and uh, I landed on top of a pine tree in a very ridiculous situation, <laughs> and I finally climbed down uh, the tree and got walking in the Alps for about five hours. And then I uh, became special guest of the Reich for about 15 months. In a prison camp? Prison camp. I see. And you were rescued and sent back to the States? Finally sent back to the States. You're still... When, when did you get back in the States? Uh, June of 45. And then they assigned you to what kind of duty? Uh, well, I was uh, bombardering first. I went to bombardering school, and then I went out recruiting. I see. And it's... You, you what? I got recruited. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder they assigned the man to it. Well, now, you plan to make a career of the Army? I certainly do. Yes. Where, where are you going to live after your honeymoon? What are your plans? Uh, well, we're going down to Dayton, Ohio. I'm going to the Air Force Institute of Technology. And right we'll make field. our home there, mm-hmm. right field. Good. And uh, we hope to get a little apartment or a home. We have a dog. I guess we'll have to get a little home. <laughs> but uh, it uh, should be quite nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not going to work, uh, are you? At least Boots not a choice. Mm, not for a while, anyway, I don't believe. Not as a stewardess, anyway. No, you're not, you're not <laughs> We're well, going to live there. Well, now, let's get down to the most interesting part, which is this love story that brought you two together. Who's going to start? Oh, I think she should. Mm, I think you're so. getting my way now anyway, aren't I? <laughs> and Charles hasn't seen anything yet. <laughs> Go ahead, if you will, please. Um, it seems as though it was when I was attending the university in Denver. And, How long uh, ago? Uh, a year ago this spring, April to be exact, the day after Easter. And um, I had a package uh, to mail to my little niece, and uh, the post office wasn't far from where, from where I was living, and at the time I was walking down, um, going to mail my package, minding my own business, and a couple of uh, army lieutenants are walking down the street, facing me, and so all of a sudden they exclaim, my, do you always dress that way, or something to that, you know. They didn't whistle. <laughs> 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 but um, uh, they said, uh, couldn't we help you mail that package? They inquired first where I was going, and I said to mail this package. And, uh, well, they wondered if they couldn't help me mail the package. And I said, well, I know I think I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself. But um, they 
proceeded to take the package. So what could I do but follow them? <laughs> it's called strategy, I think. And very smart, too. So did you mail the package, Charles? We sure did. Well, you, you undoubtedly were one of those lieutenants. Airmail special yeah. delivery. <laughs> <laughs> and then? And then uh, after the package, well, I proceeded to leave. But they said, well, why don't we have a Coke? And um, we finally decided to go for a Coke. <laughs> That's that persuasion? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, and talking, uh, that was in the afternoon, and he had to leave for another town that night to do some more recruiting. I don't know whether that was the same kind of recruiting or not. <laughs> <laughs> that point is well taken. <laughs> And so we, um, after the coke, he suggested that I see him when he comes back to town. But I never gave it another thought, really, and uh, he took me to home. No, I didn't expect to see him. That's what she thought. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you had, after seeing her in that nice black dress, she couldn't get away with it. <laughs> I know what you mean, yes, yes, very well. Why, he shouldn't talk like this. No, that's all right. Was, was, did anything memorable on this first... Uh... No, other than, uh, oh, he, he seemed... She liked me quite a bit. How do you mean? Uh, well, he said I looked like a very kissable girl. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, but he took me home, and then his buddy... Wait a minute. I tried to kiss you her. You what? I tried to kiss her, but only got a peck on the cheek. <laughs> on the cheek. I just a little... <laughs> yeah, but then did you two separate then yourself? Yes, uh-huh. Home? He took me home, and uh, he didn't call, but uh, his buddy uh, was the one that uh, started calling me. But he came back in about a week. And so we dated frequently, uh, not too much, because he was out of town quite quite a lot. So it went on, and we dated now and then, not too regularly. <clears throat> but then I became a little bit interested, you know. He was a very fascinating date, and there was always nice little gifts, flowers and such. So <laughs> um, we enjoyed every... Sugar coating. What was that? Sugar touch. Sugar touch, yes. Yeah. And so? <laughs> and, um... See, what was I? You, you were very interested in each other. You said oh, yes. You've been uh-huh. dating regularly. And we've been dating, and, uh, it, uh, of course, he wasn't the only one I was dating, or vice versa, sure. but he was a very nice date. So, then, one day, uh, one of my best girlfriends said, uh, by the way, what's the name of that lieutenant you're going with? And so I told her, uh-huh, she said. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure he doesn't have another girlfriend? I said, well, now, I don't know. Uh, but it come to find out she was working for the same insurance company that he had a couple of rings insured with me. And so I'm finding out about a girl in San Francisco that he's engaged to after a month or so, you know. <laughs> a regular Army Air Force's wolf, I'd say. <laughs> Isn't it awful? I don't know. You came out all right. <laughs> well, now, what, what did you do? I, I didn't do anything. I kept dating him. I thought, hmm, that's a pretty good joke, you know. On him? Uh-huh, on him. Because uh, here he was, you know, being very gallant. And uh, uh, he was rushing me, you know. And so I'm all the time knowing that he's engaged to this other girl, but not telling him until a month later. And did you tell him? Yes, I told him. What, what, what was his reaction when you confessed? Oh, him? you should have seen the look on his face. <laughs> That was, the, that was the second time you were shot down, Charles. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, what did you do after that? Did you just then say, well, you, you really told him off and then just uh, left him? No, uh, because I was interested in quite a few others, too. Yeah. And so we just dated now and then. Casually. Casually, mm-hmm. Oh, just about every week, every day. <laughs> well, now, what happened then? How did you... Now, you, I, the, the third girl, is, I mean, the other girl is not here today, so obviously some steps have been taken in that direction. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I went uh, went back to San Francisco and saw her again, talked with her a while, and I suddenly just decided that uh, she wasn't the girl that uh, moved back in Denver, was the girl. And so uh, uh, you told, her, decided to... told her and came back and flew all the way back to uh, San Antonio and Buzz got in the wires and there was a three-hour delay and I finally got her and told her. Wait a minute, you got her on the phone? Got her on the phone. <laughs> you mean that you, you went to San Francisco and you, you had this talk with this girl and That's right. settled the problem there and she was uh, amicable and agreeable. That's right. And you flew to... Uh, back to San Antonio and uh, I telephone. called... Telephone booth and I said, uh, you're the one. <laughs> That's all I said for about five minutes. <laughs> 
that's a that's a fine telephone conversation. You're the one. You're the one. You're the one. Not like a broken record. Well, what did you say when you heard this? I didn't say anything. Not uh, I I just didn't particularly care. Oh, yes, well, come on. Now. <laughs> She's not fooling us. Well, anyway, was that the way you proposed to her? No. I went... Where were you when you proposed to her? Uh, uh... <laughs> City Park. Where about? Uh, right by a lake. No. Very romantic. On his bench? Mm-hmm. In Denver. Mm-hmm. In the no, in a car. In, in a car. Blue, in oh. the blue Buick. Oh, the blue, blue Buick. Buick. Oh, yes. It <laughs> matches her eyes. Oh, we were parked in the beautiful uh, willow tree. Uh, I had been thinking about choosing this place quite a while. <laughs> then they were ducked out on the lake and the moon above. Had your arm around her? Both arms around her, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you said, how did you and, say And, uh, well, I, I said, I love you more than anyone else. Do you love me more than anyone else? And, uh, she said yes. And, uh... I asked her if she'd marry me, and uh, she didn't say yes right away. <laughs> she kept you waiting? Playing hard to get. <laughs> Let's find out now. This, this is very important. How long did you play hard to get? Oh, uh, about a week or two. Really? Yeah. She kept him in suspense. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then she got your answer? You got the answer? And I finally got the answer, yes. And boy, were you relieved. And he was very perturbed right. waiting for these two weeks. I mean, and you were very I... happy because knowing he was perturbed, uh-huh. you were perfectly I was safe. waiting for a year. Yes. <laughs> the bride's revenge. We have for the bride her beautiful bouquet, a round shower arrangement of white sweet peas and white carnations tied with matching satin ribbon, the inserted corsage made of red Better Times roses, made of honors carrying a round shower arrangement made of uh, pink carnations and lavender asters tied with a light blue bow, all designed by Mr. John Patrick Burke, our famous floral artist of Beverly Hills. And you are? Vernell Knudsen the, of Denver. A friend? Yes, we're very good friends. Are you the one who found out about the other girl? No, I'm not. No. <laughs> And you, sir? Dalton Anderman, brother of Charles. Oh, are you married? Yes, I am. Oh, good. And you encouraged him? I did. <laughs> How long have you been married? Four years. Yes. Fine. That's good advice. Then what we have for the best man, the bride's wedding band, it's an art carved ring by wood. It's a beautiful setting with five perfect blue-white diamonds, and like all of the art carved rings, it is lovely. Put that in your pocket, if you will. And do you have on something old? <clears throat> yes, I do. You? Yes. Borrowed? Yes. Blue? No. No blue? <laughs> Jack, do you, have, do you have something blue to match the bride's eyes? Or the blue? Denver Glamour Blue Garter. No. <laughs> <laughs> do you have one? Yes. What? Where? Where? Oh, well, just a moment here. We'll just Turn around, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> and the penny in your shoe. <laughs> yes? Uh, yes. And the name of your love song? Uh, my heart beats for you. Good. Not for me, for Charles. Right now, as the bride and groom in the wedding party go down the aisle, out through the lovely gardens of the Chapman Park Hotel to the Old World Chapel, where the clergyman waits, Jack McElroy sings their love song. As beats the ocean surf upon the sand, so beats my heart. For you, for just as constantly as sea meets land, so beats my heart for you. The rhythm of a mighty band So beats my heart for you There's a typical young bride and groom. Aren't they charming? She's very lovely and he's very handsome. But right now, we'll have a few words from our own Jack McElroy. 
Hair that lacks luster, hair that's not delightfully fragrant, can dim the loveliness and charm of an otherwise beautiful woman. That's why it pays to keep your hair always looking its best. By washing it once a week with mulsified coconut oil shampoo. Now, there's a reason why it's so important for you to use mulsified shampoo. And it's this. Mulsified shampoo is totally different from so many soaps that leave an afterfilm to dull your hair and make it unpleasant. For this shampoo rinses out readily. Just try mulsified coconut oil shampoo once, and you'll see for yourself how radiant, soft, and fragrant fresh it leaves your hair. And remember that mulsified shampoo not only beautifies, but protects as well. For it removes loose dandruff instantly and contains none of the harmful free alkali frequently found in ordinary soaps. It's so mild and gentle you can use it as often as you wish without harm. Besides this, mulsified coconut oil shampoo is easy to use. For it foams fast, lathers freely, and cleanses oiliness without tiresome rubbing. So get the big bottle at any toilet goods counter today. It gives you more, saves you money, lasts for months. Ask for Mulsified Coconut Oil Shampoo. Here to describe our bride's outfit today, we're very pleased to have a very charming young lady, an airline stewardess for Western Airlines, one of those who's been so grand to our brides and grooms as they've flown about the United States on their honeymoons, Miss Paula Betts. So, Miss Betts, if you will, please, where are you? Come on up here. <laughs> Hello. 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 Paula, you tell us about the bride first, if you will, please. Well, the bride was very lovely today. She had a beautiful uh, dress of uh, slipper satin designed by Barbara Britton. Her train was around four feet long, and uh, her bodice and uh, peplum were made of uh, Chantilly lace. And her lovely fingertip veil uh, was caught in a halo of orange blossoms. And she truly presented a lovely bride to us all. Mm Mm-hmm. And what about the bridesmaid? She was also lovely uh, in blue taffeta with a uh, sequin uh, skull cap on her uh, lovely brown hair. Mm Mm-hmm. And our groom, I can describe that. I saw so many of those for so long. (laughs) What do you mean? Uh, He was very handsome. Yes, I noticed. You were sort of breathing hard there for a moment, Paula. Now, our groom wore his dress, army dress uniform with his ribbons and medals and all. It'll make a very beautiful picture, the bride in her white gown and the groom. Just think of their children and grandchildren. As they look through the old family album, they'll present quite a picture. Paula, I'm glad you're here today because I understand that Western Airlines is inaugurating a new series of, of, of flights and new service. Yes, uh, today we start our inaugural trip to Seattle, Washington. Your, your new flight line is to Portland and Seattle and all That's up to the right. Northwest? Uh, yes, uh, we are featuring uh, border to border, uh, starting from San Diego to Seattle. Uh, with 162 seats every day to serve the public. Our motto is service. Well, you sure give it. (laughs) I'll tell you something. The reason we're so interested in Western Airlines is because they have taken such wonderful care of our brides and grooms. They've flown them on honeymoons to Lake Louise and Banff and to the Black Hills of South Dakota, and this just sort of opens up new places they can go on their honeymoon. Yes. They can go to Crater Lake in Oregon, and they can go to Mount Rainier up in Seattle, Mm -hmm. and, oh, there's some beautiful lodges up there. And uh, they also can go on up to uh, Vancouver from Seattle. Mm -hmm. That's a lovely uh, honeymoon trip. mm -hmm. Have you had your honeymoon yet? Uh, No. Mine will be (laughs) around December, I guess. You all (laughs) set? Yes. Well, I'm happy, Paula. Would you be kind enough to take for me... Uh, here as gifts to Mayor of San Francisco, Roger Lapham, Mayor of Oakland, Mayor Smith, uh, Mayor of uh, Portland, Earl Riley, and Mayor of Seattle, William Devon, Governor Walgren of Washington, and Governor Earl Snell of Oregon. Good wishes from bride and groom, and we have a beautiful Bruin watch for them, a product of the Bruin watch company. Thank you very much. They all love these. Thank you. You deliver them in person. I'll do that. I'd like to have a watch delivered in person by you any time, Miss Thank Barrett. you, Mr. Nelson. Thank you very much. <laughs> very nice job. I want you folks here to see the lovely gifts we have for this very charming young couple for that little home that they're speaking about that they have to have because they have a dog. Of course, most beautiful and traditional is the sterling silver that every bride and groom want. Of course, it's Gorham. This is it. Since 1831, America's leading silversmith, Gorham, each day presents our bride and groom their choice of four of their many exquisite patterns. Strasbourg, Buttercup, Lyric, and Chantilly today. There's a complete service for four, and here is a new product of our sponsors. It's Philips Skin Cream and Philips Cleansing Cream. Helps our bride to keep that youthful radiance, that beautiful complexion. Here is, for their home, another grand gift, the famous Bendix Consulate. It's the automatic Bendix radio phonograph combination, both standard broadcasts and shortwave. It plays 10- and 12-inch records, storage space for over 100 records, 
You see, it's a beautiful piece of furniture. It's a product of the radio division of the Bendix Aviation Corporation. This is their wedding album from Bernard of Hollywood and Palm Springs. It has formal portraits and candid shots, and it'll be very handsome with their pictures in it. Uh, so they have a talking picture and much to talk about later. Capitol Records of Hollywood record our bride and groom uh, and put it in a special album. What a grand gift. What a thing to have on your anniversaries to go back over. This is the Argoflex camera, the finest made by the Argus Company with the reflex action. That's so that they can get the many, many pictures they'll want to remember their honeymoon forever. And also for their home, this is grand. This is La Mirada Mandarin Potter, Pottery Dinnerware in popular dawn pattern. It's four-piece set. It's square in shape. Very outstanding. Uh, dawn pink and, and uh, dusk rose, I guess they call it. It's very, very beautiful. And a Max Factor makeup kit for that lovely bride. This beautiful case full of Max Factor's fine makeup. They're cosmetics. And here's the Eureka home cleaning system. Complete. It has four separate types of cleaners. The upright cleaner, the tank type cleaner, cleaner, about a thousand attachments, a waxer, and also the Eureka cordless automatic iron. And here is a really outstanding gift for their home. It's the 1947 Launderall, the complete home laundry with a famous reversal roll action. You fill it with clothes from the top. You have a cleaner wash with less soap and less hot water. And uh, I guess I haven't finished my laundry in my Launderall. I better put that back. Nice pair of diapers. <laughs> it's a grand gift for their home. I know they'll really enjoy that blonde roll, and it'll mean so much to them in their new home. Coming back to the chapel now, very happy, looking grand, our happy bride, our handsome groom, Mr. and Mrs. Charles Anderman. Congratulations, Charles. Here are some of your many gifts, and we also want to tell you about your honeymoon. Waiting outside is a Tanner Motor Livery limousine with uniform chauffeur going to drive you to Lockheed Air Terminal. We'll board a big four-engine Western Airlines luxury liner, which will fly you to San Francisco, California, where you'll be met by a private plane belonging to the people who operate your honeymoon resort, Hoburg's Among the Pines in beautiful Lake County. This plane will fly you up to Hoburg's, and there you'll be guests for a full week at the gateway to the mighty California Redwood Empire. You'll land at Hoburg's private airport, airport, and five minutes later, you'll be in the midst of the greatest vacation resort imaginable. Hoburg's and nearby Siegler Springs have been the vacation paradise of Northern California for over 50 years. It has everything, because well, you'll find out. You'll dance to the music of fine dance bands in the open-air pavilion under the pines. There's every type of recreation possible, including riding, swimming, hiking, and fishing. Your host for a full week's stay will be owner George Hoburg, ably assisted by his master of ceremonies, Ozzy. At the end of your stay, a Hoburg claim will fly you to San Francisco, and there you'll board a Western Airlines DC-4 for your return trip to Los Angeles. Right now, let me wish you all possible health and success for a long, happy married life together. I know you're going to have it. Good wishes to you. You folks, listen to Jack McElroy. We'll see the rest of you tomorrow. Say, mothers, this time of day when most of the Ben folks are at work, now it can be told. Not fathers, but mothers are the ones who usually make the decisions about baby. Big decisions, little decisions, it's all the same. And one of the important ones you as a mother have to make concerns giving a laxative to your baby. Well, most mothers faced with that decision feel they can't be too particular about something so important. And they give their young children the laxative made specially for children, Fletcher's Castoria. Fletcher's Castoria contains no harsh ingredients as some adult laxatives do, but is gentle, effective, just right for babies. Another thing, there's no struggle getting baby to take it, because Fletcher's Castoria has such a pleasant taste. Your druggist has Fletcher's Castoria in the package with the green band on it, so ask him for a bottle today. And you'll always have it on hand whenever baby doesn't maintain regularity. Caution, use only as directed. Oh, and be sure you see that green band. That's your assurance you're getting the original children's laxative, genuine Fletcher's Castoria. Jack McElroy speaking. Bride and groom with John Nelson comes to you every day, Monday through Friday, at this same time from Hollywood. It contains the whitest pigment money can buy. Yes, ladies, and that's why Energene Shoe White gives shoes a snowy whiteness that's unsurpassed, a whiteness that's uniform from toe to heel, actually cleans as it whitens. Today, get the best, whitest Energene Shoe White of all time. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs> 